Well, hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to Cocktails and Rock Tales with me, your most notorious groupie, Allison Rouse. And for those of you who don't know that are just stumbling on, I'm the author of We've Got Tonight, The Life and Times of Notorious Groupie. Half the story of my life, just only half of my rock and roll experiences. Link to where you can get it is down in the description, along with these books as well, along with my merchandise, the Patreon, the Cocktail of the Day, all kinds of other stuff. So go down, folks. You know how I love it. And as always, so much love and thank you to everybody who has been here for such a long time, and welcome to all the new people who are really joining us and making this a, an awesome community. I can't even tell you guys how much I truly, truly appreciate it. And it just means the whole world to me. So thank you guys so much as always. All right. And as always, I'm going to be a talking today. And I'm going to be talking about a subject because I am trying to expand my social media presence. So I'm going on to TikTok and stuff. So I'm at the usual sister 001 on TikTok if you want to follow me there. But I've been kind of looking, doing duets and stuff. And I found a lot of misinformation online, especially about one thing. Who was Penny Lane from the movie Almost Famous? And 90% of them get it wrong. And for one reason and one reason only. So Everybody, we're going to have a hot topic today, aren't we? And to cool that hot topic off, we're going to have a little drink called the Almost Famous. That's right. That's right, folks. So everybody, grab your fur parkas, kick up your feet, and let's have a little cocktail rock tail, shall we? Cheers, big ears. Not bad. The Aperol kind of balances out a lot of the flavor on it. But you know what? Between this and the Kip Winger scale, I hate Almost Famous. And I don't want to swallow Kip Winger either, but I'd rather swallow this. So, okay. So let's get started. Who was the real Penny Lane? Now, what I've been seeing on TikTok, and I saw an article as well. I'll find it and put the link also down in the description. To where Scammy to Bars was like, was so pissed off because Cameron Crowe, when she saw the movie, she was like, that looks exactly like me, and I'm pissed off because Cameron Crowe never consulted me. Well, there's a reason why. Because, number one, she is not the inspiration for Penny Lane. Period. Read this. I will also put the link to this article where I got this from the description. Because, as you can see, that would be a woman called Penny Trumbull, who, of course, back in the time when she was a groupie, Penny Lane was out, so people started calling her Penny Lane. First and foremost, and Scammy DeBar said, oh my God, this looks exactly like me. Okay, let's do a little comparison. Here is um, Kate Hudson as Penny Lane. Here is Penny Trumbull at the same age. Spitting image, right? Absolutely spitting image. Now, here's Penny Lane, almost famous, and here's Pamela DeBars. I'll put a few different pictures up because she said it looked just like her, but I'm begging to differ. Because even with her blonde hair, she didn't look anything like Penny Lane. She didn't have blonde hair that long and went to brunette and this, whatever the fuck this was, I don't know what hairdresser gave you this, Pamela DeBars, but she fucking hated you. No wonder Don Johnson was like, ooh. He's like, get off my neck. But see, as you can see, this is not, by comparison, no, she is not the spitting image of Penny Lane at all. And also, in the movie, it had Penny Lane with a bunch of girls and she's like, oh, she runs a school for Band-Aids. She teaches women how to be groupies. Pamela DeBars never did that. In fact, she was the antithesis of that, as we've all read in her book. She talks about other groupies very disparagingly, unless it's the GTOs and stuff like that. But anybody else that was around the scene, like Lori Maddox and Sable Star, she talked shit about. So that's not exactly what I would call school. She herself said she wanted groupies of her own. She wanted the t attention. She wanted the fame. So now she's got that, and she's got what she calls the dolls. But that was not at all what was happening with her life in the 70s. Now, by comparison, Penny Trumbull, she had the Flying Garter Girls, which was a, a 
pack of groupies that hung around and she brought in new girls and taught them how to hang out with the band and how to be a groupie in the 70s and stuff because we all have different things like I have a book how to be a groupie 101 kind of the same thing so that again is another similarity to Penny Trumbull and not to Penny Lane so it's, and it kind of drives me nuts because Penny Trumbull was amazing. She rocked. She was loved by all the rockers and stuff like that. And she doesn't get the credit where credit is due because it is being usurped by someone who is letting lies be her truth. And this has to be known because so many things on TikTok and stuff would say, she is the inspiration behind Penny Lane. Again, here's this. No, she wasn't. She... Penny Trumbull actually worked on Almost Famous as a consultant to her character, Penny Lane. And people think because of the movie that Cameron Crowe was from Los Angeles. He wasn't. He was from Oregon. And so was Penny Trumbull, who the bands all called Penny Lane. That's where the original groupie name for Penny Lane came from. Nobody called Pamela DeBars that. Nobody anything like that. And you guys, I'm not doing this, like I said, because I don't get along with Pamela DeBars because I get sick and tired of her usurping things because people think she's the end-all be-all of groupie queen knowledge. And she's not even close. Like, she's at the bottom of the barrel, really. And it drives me nuts because she takes away from the reality that was Penny Trumbull's life. And Penny Trumbull was in high school. She became a groupie. She had the flyer garden girls. She garter girls. She was going all over the United States, the world, traveling with rock bands. And then, blam, she chose to walk away, to stop. Just like Penny Lane did in the movie. She got out of rock and roll. She finished high school. She went to college. She started businesses. I believe she still does that today because there's not that much of her on the internet because she doesn't need to define herself by the amount of adoration and attention she gets. And she doesn't need to twist the truth of her life because it's already out there in the form of Penny Lane. So you guys that are sitting here saying that Penny Lane was Pamela DeBars, no, she wasn't. Penny Lane and the Flying Garter Girls were the actual inspiration behind Penny Lane. And, I mean, it's not fair that someone else detracts away from that and tries to usurp it as their own. I don't care who you are. Don't usurp it as your own. Don't be talking bullshit just because it perpetuates your image publicly when, in reality, you know that's not the truth privately. It's not. Because... Like I said, Pamela DeBars is so far gone in her ego and what her PR team believed of her because nobody ever called her the queen of the groupies in rock and roll. Nobody ever called her the golden groupie in rock and roll. Nobody ever called her Penny Lane in rock and roll. Her nickname, Miss Pamela, that's not even a nickname. You know what I mean? That's a name given to by Frank Zappa, but Frank Zappa gave a lot of other groupies nicknames. 70s, 80s, Dr. Dot, anybody? So it wasn't like this is something that was part of her life. It wasn't. She wasn't the Penny Lane. She wasn't the queen of a school of groupies or anything like that. Like I said, Penny Trumbull was. And Cameron Crow has said this several times because Cameron Crow has gotten upset with Pamela slamming him in the press that he never consulted me. And when I saw the movie, I was so mad and stuff like that. Well, Cameron has responded. And in that article where he says Penny Trumbull was the inspiration, she worked as a consultant on the film. He was from Oregon, where Penny Trumbull was from and where he knew her in high school, I believe. Maybe, maybe not. I think he might have just known her from the groupie scene. I don't know the full history. I've tried to find it. You guys, I do do my research. So if I'm saying I don't know, it's because I haven't found the truth. Because so much of the untruth has infiltrated into word of mouth. And people, and I know this firsthand, people don't want to do the five seconds of 
of research on Google to find out the truth. They just want to be lazy and go with the lies and the bullshit. And that's not fair to the real, true life Penny Lane Trumbull. Because like I said, look at these two. You know, Kate Hudson might have put some of Pamela Bars into her attitude of the groupie, but Cam and Crow had total control of what she looked like, and that's what she looked like. I'm just putting Penny Trumbull up here because that's all I need to do. So people who are wanting to be groupies or in love with this movie, Almost Famous, really research the history of the movie because it's going to give you a whole different ball game. It's not what you think, and neither is the main character. So let's, we need to start stretching our legs outside this tiny, tiny little make-believe box. Because Penny Trumbull always said exactly what it was like to be a groupie. She didn't bullshit. She knew there was heartbreak and stuff like that. I've always said exactly what it's like to be on the road. It's boring as fuck. And that's why people say my book is repetitive. Because I wrote the truth. I didn't write a fairy tale. And if you're gonna believe in a fairy tale, believe in what the fairy tale actually was. And that was Penny Trumbull. This is the real life Penny Lane. And her hair was just a slightly kind of strawberry blonde, coppery, really cute. You can't really tell in this picture, but yeah, I mean, she controlled her destiny in rock and roll. She made it what she wants and she went off and she got out of it. She had her fun for a few years and went off and lived her life privately, just like the real life Penny Lane did when she plopped down her ticket to Morocco. Well, Penny Trumbull, she might not have gone to Morocco. She may have, who knows? Because she's really, really like the bigger icon than most people think. And she deserves a huge icon status. She's another one that's not on all those groupie lists either, which is bullshit. Because again, every groupie list lists Pamela DeBars as the inspiration because Pamela, e Pamela's ego, even though her heart and soul knows it's not true, the ego says, well, yes, it is because I'm the queen of the groupies and everything's about me. Well, it's not. So there you guys go. There's my little rant for the day. Like I said, we all know my feelings about Pamela DeBars and they are very much deserved to her because she has trashed me publicly, called me a liar, and cost me a lot of interviews, cost me things over the way, and I've never cost her, and I'm tired of it. Because like I said, when I was looking on TikTok, all I see is Pamela DeBars was the inspiration of Penny Lane, because that's what Pamela DeBars lets people believe, and she perpetuate, perpetuates, when in reality, she had nothing to do with Penny Lane, this chick did. There you go. All right, guys. Tell me your thoughts and everything down on the... Because I know a lot of people here do like Pamela DeBars, and that's fine. I'm not trying to get anybody to dislike her or like her or anything else. I'm just trying to let you know that the reality of her groupiedom and the actual reality are two different... Or her idea, her delusions of how she describes her her groupiedom and the actual reality are two different things. And you need to be educated in the reality just as much as you are in the fairy tale that she has created. So there you guys go. There's a real life Penny Lane. Penny Trouble. She fucking rocked it. She owns it, but she owns it with humble grace, not with egotistical arrogance. All right. So cheers to the true almost famous. Penny Lane, and everybody, do not forget to hit that subscribe button, hit the share button, spread me like I spread my legs in the 80s, hit my bells, and we will see you here next time on Cocktails of Rocktails. Cheers, big ears. <laughs>